Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon to all viewers. It is my great pleasure to welcome all viewers to the 10th series of Research and Innovation Webinar, School of Electrical Engineering. My name is Sherry, the moderator for today's session. This program is brought to you live from School of Electrical Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, University Technology Malaysia's Facebook. Without further ado, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Muhammad Kamal Ibrahim, the Associate Chair of Research and Academic Staff, to give a short opening, as well as introduce our guest speaker, Associate Professor Dr. Nurul Muazzah Abdul Latif, the Head of Communication Network System Research Group. Over to you, Prof. Thank you very much, Puan Sherry Huzaima, for introducing this event. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and salam sejahtera to all viewers. Thank you once again to all viewers that follow this webinar through our FB Live School of Electrical Engineering. My name is Professor Muhammad Kamal Ibrahim. I'm the Associate Chair of Research Academic Staff, School of Electrical Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, University of Indonesia. Our topics today entitled Communication Network Technology, Drivers to Future Sustainability that will be given by our Head of Computer Network System Research Group, Associate Professor Dr. Nurul Muazzam Abdul Latif. Before she gives her presentation, I would like to introduce our speaker today. Before that, please share, like, and comment our FB Live School of Electrical Engineering. For your information, Dr. Nurul Muazzam Abdul Latif received her first Bachelor of Engineering degree in Electrical Telecommunication from University of Malaysia in 2002. She then received Master of Science in Communication and Signal Processing and PhD in Communication Engineering from Newcastle University, Newcastle, Pantine, United Kingdom in 2003 and 2008, respectively. She is an active senior member of IEEE and currently holds a position as Honorary Secretary of IEEE Communication Society and Vehicular Technology Society Malaysian Chapter. In 2015 and 2017, she was invited as visiting researcher in the studio hall of France. She is an associate professor in the School of Electrical Engineering and the head of Communication Network System Research Group. She is also a certified chartered engineer from IET since 2019. Her research interests include wireless sensor networks, mobile ad hoc networks, cognitive radio, internet of things, and artificial intelligence. About his webinar today, she will introduce the members and research activities of the communication network system research group. In addition to that, there will be a brief introduction to different types of networks in this window. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Nurul Muazza to give his webinar on communication network technology drivers to future sustainability. Over to you, Dr. Nurul Muazza. Um, thank you very much, Prof. Dr. Khan and Mrs. Sherry. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good afternoon to all of you viewers who are watching this webinar right now. Um, so I am Nurul Muazza binti Abdul Latif. Uh, I'm the head of Communication Network System Research Group. So mainly for today, I'm going to uh, talk about all the research activities, uh, sorry, some of the research activities, if not all, uh, from my research group. Um, okay, and this uh, is the outline for my presentation today. Um, first, I'm going to um, show to you. Uh, first, I'm going to show to you uh, the um, uh, all the team members in my uh, research group. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, highlight some of the research activities based on uh, research work that I have categorized. And I'm also going to show to you some of the community services and uh, international collaborations that we have. And then I'm going to show you uh, a seminar that we have organized uh, earlier this year. Okay, right. Um, uh, our team members comprises of uh, eight team, uh, members. Uh, I'm the head of, uh, I'm the first head of Communication Network System Research Group because interestingly, uh, this research group has just been established in 2019. Uh, we came all the way from uh, TRG Telematic Research Group up to uh, 
from TRD uh, and then uh, uh, UTM MIMO Center of, of Excellence and then uh, rebranding it to ATT and now, and now our research is more focused towards uh, civil research areas and we are called Communication Network System Research Group. And uh, the next to me uh, on the screen here is one of our uh, prominent researchers, Associate Professor Dr. Sharifa Kamilas Yusof, who is also my mentor. And then next to her is another experienced researcher, um, which, uh, who is uh, Associate Professor Dr. Sharifa Hafiza Sid Arifin. She's a Deputy Director of uh, UTM LEAD. And we are also honored to have one of our Associate Chairs of uh, SKE, Dr. Kamuli Muhammad Yusof. And the other four members are um, Dr. Nik Nordini, Nia Abdul Malik. And uh, she is also a very experienced researcher. And we also have young researchers such as uh, Dr. Muhammad Arif Baharudin, and Dr. Nuzza Efiana Ghazali and our uh, newest member here is Dr. Rashida Asad who just joined our club. Okay, right. Before I'm going to talk about our research activities, I'm going to describe a little bit about Industry 4.0 that somehow uh, drives our research motivation. Um, basically, this IR 4.0 is about automation and also uh, data exchange. And um, in a manufacturing context, it means that this will introducing robotics and also sensors to replace human labor for tasks that could be automated. So the main drivers for the change is the size of the network that have grown massively due to this number of devices which need connectivity. So uh, these devices uh, can sprawl from tablets, sensor nodes uh, up until smartphones. Okay. I'm also going to show you an uh, interesting fact of uh, McKinsey and company. Um, we know that the Internet of Things technology will radically change the world in the coming years. And uh, network devices will be a substantial part of that change. Uh, if you, you can see here on the screen, um, in 2020, already there are 12.5 billion network devices uh, already have outnumbered the number of population and if you can see that by 2025 there will be uh, around more than 50 billion network devices and the differences is uh, the differences are very significant um, compared to the number of population so people use uh, devices uh, may of which are equipped with sensors and also and also automatic uh, driven functions uh, practically in all areas of your life including for work businesses and also leisures so this shows how important it is the ongoing research in the area of wireless network okay now um, I'm going to talk about our research activities based on several research focus so um, there are four research focus uh, in our group. Uh, the first one here is cognitive radio network. And the second one is wireless sensor network. The third one uh, is the internet of things technology. And the final one is the uh, new next generation network, which is called software defined network. So uh, the list here is not uh, limited, uh, but um, we also have uh, some uh, other uh, research focus, but these are all research activities that I'm going to uh, show for today. Okay, the first research focus is about cognitive radio network. And uh, the term cognitive radio may be um, quite strange or some of you may not be familiar with the term cognitive radio network. Uh, basically, this is a radio that can change it's a uh, transmitter parameters based on interaction with the environment in which it operates. Okay, yeah, so in short, these devices can um, dynamically modify the, their parameters to make the best use of the available spectrum and also other resources. Okay, um, to make it more clear about cognitive radio, uh, let me show you uh, this figure, okay, which show the spectral inefficiency, inefficiency um, in some of the uh, bands here. Uh, we know that, like I've said before, it is estimated that there will be more than 50 billion network devices. So 
um, these devices will use huge amount of spectrum, okay, with the increasing number of uh, these devices. And however, the spectrum is available is actually a uh, scarce resources. So this is where cognitive radio comes into handy because uh, it offers uh, significantly uh, spectrum uh, to increase uh, spectrum efficiency by having these uh, smart secondary users, which is also called uh, CR users. So basically, these CR users is unlicensed users that uh, intend to use the free license users uh, of the spectrum holes because the reality is many parts of the license spectrum are not optimally utilized. If you can see here, on the figure, um, some part of the bands are very crowded. For example, the GSM band, the LTE band, the, the wireless uh, local area network band, and uh, some part of the band, which, for example, TV band, is still vacant. So, uh, by using the capabilities of the cognitive radio, this part of the spectrum can be used in the underlay manner. Uh, as long as the power of the secondary users should not be uh, give any harmful impact to the primary users, or in other words, should not disturb the licensed users. So basically, that is all about cognitive video. All right. Okay, now uh, a little bit about uh, cognitive radio at hot network, which is also some of uh, uh, areas in our research group. Um, the figure shows here is one example of cognitive radio ad hoc network, which is made up of ad hoc network with cognitive radio devices. Okay, uh, ad hoc network is actually a temporary network that is set up instantaneously uh, without any fits infrastructure. So, combined with the cognitive, cognitive radio users, uh, cognitive radio ad hoc network is a self-configured network with the opportunistic spectrum access. And nodes in this, net, this network should have the ability, uh, cognitive ability to sense neighboring wireless devices in operation and also adjust the output power and modulation characteristic. Okay, so focus to the research uh, project. So this is uh, one of the projects uh, in cognitive radio area funded by uh, Fundamental Research Grant Scheme under the Ministry of Higher Education. So uh, the main objective of this project, entitled Energy Efficient Channelization Algorithm for Cognitive Radio Wire Sensor Network, is to uh, develop uh, uh, an energy efficient channel decision so that uh, the switching and also the selection of channel uh, can, be, um, can improve the uh, energy consumption of the network because as you see here uh, secondary user uh, sends the channel uh, all the time because it wants to uh, it wants to find out which channel is vacant when i say channel uh, you imagine the highway and the uh, user or the highway try to uh, uh, find the best route to the destination without any traffic jam okay so this sensing process basically uh, consume huge energy so this will make that energy efficiency is a major problem uh, confronting this radio uh, work uh, of course as, is the, as in the case with traditional sensor network so this work here utilizes uh, reinforcement learning to make the intelligent decision for channel switching and also selection channel selection to achieve a uh, higher energy efficiency higher um, energy uh, channel availability and also high transmission throughput, okay? So we have done several simulations and from the simulations, it has been shown that uh, the proposed algorithm here can energy efficiency by 35%, uh, in improve the throughput by 15% and also improve the channel availability by 17%. Okay, uh, moving on to another project in cognitive radio area. Uh, this is the project uh, led by uh, Associate Professor Dr. Sharif Akamila uh, through e-science grant uh, granted by uh, MOSTI. And this project has developed an integrated handoff management in cognitive radio mobile ad hoc network. So the objective here is 
to reduce the number of spectrum handoff and also handoff blocking probability and at the same time maintaining the end-to-end -end activity. So the figure here shows the proposed framework for the integrated spectrum handoff management in the cognitive radio ad hoc network. Okay, uh, different types of root failure, uh, maybe because of the spectrum mobility. Spectrum mobility means that um, the available spectrum at different time and secondary user mobility because when we say uh, when we are talking about ad hoc network, the user, which is the devices, uh, have the ability to move. Okay, because it's a mobile devices, and also channel heterogeneity, meaning that the different um, uh, condition of the channels. So uh, based on this work, um, this work here have considered all the factors I have been talking about just now. So this will involve the modeling and also characterization of the spectrum mobility and also channel availability. And the result have showed that uh, the proposed scheme, the scheme can improve up to 45% in terms of network throughput and also reduce the handout delay by 35%. Okay, um, these are another two projects uh, by Dr. Sharifa Kamil, Associate Professor Dr. Sharifa Kamila. The first one is about wide band compressive spectrum sensing in noisy environments. So this compressive sen sensing is basically an approach for signal acquisition at sample rate, uh, much lower than Nyquist rate. So the achievements of this project is um, they, uh, they, uh, have, uh, they are able to develop um, an optimization of compressive spectrum sensing framework and recovery error analysis of compressive, uh, compressive sensing. And on my right hand is another project, which is uh, funded by uh, University Research Grant uh, by UTM. Uh, it is called Location Assisted Opportuni uh, Opportunistic Spectrum Access. And the primary objective for this project is to develop a learning-based location assisted spectrum access scheme uh, incorporating uh, primary user activities, okay, based on uh, uh, cognitive radio user movement history. Uh, in short, this work is actually able to predict the next location of the cognitive radio user, uh, enhances the spectrum utilization by developing um, um, joint learning based temporal and spectrum, spatial spectrum access framework. Okay, so basically, all the researchers in cognitive radio. Uh, at the creative radio network, uh, mainly involve uh, fundamental research. Okay, and moving on to the next uh, research focus, which is wireless sensor network. Okay, so a little bit about wireless sensor network. Um, wireless sensor network is actually a network comprises a number of sensor nodes that are very tiny in size. Uh, it has uh, limited functionalities and also memory. So normally, these sensor nodes are powered by battery. And this is making energy efficiency is one of the major challenges in this network. And of course, because of these challenges, uh, it has uh, impacted the network performance. And the work shown here is about optimization in wireless sensor network based on meta heuristic algorithm. Okay, so there are two works here. Uh, the first one here is about uh, energy efficient clustering in wireless sensor network. Uh, if you see here, uh, Sensor nodes are located close to each other, so they may sense the same data. And then we can exploit this uh, uh, redundancy of this generated data uh, by using this clustering protocol to improve the energy utilization as well as um, bandwidth reusability. So in short, the aim of this uh, uh, here is to produce optimal clustering that can prolong the network lifetime. Okay, uh, and the work here is uh, also collaboration with our, our colleagues in France. So um, here we have used the breathtaking search uh, algorithm, uh, hybrid it with k-means, and we have compared it with uh, its comparatives, and it has been shown that 40.6% improvement in data delivered per unit energy. Uh, we have also tested um, uh, our proposed cartoon protocol with uh, particle swarm optimization algorithm, um, genetic algorithm, simulator annealing, and uh, ICA algorithm. And on my right hand is uh, the work by Dr. Niyodini, Ni Abdul Malik. It is about collaborative beamforming uh, in the network 
Okay, so this research intends to improve the radiation beam pattern performance by introducing this intelligent collaborative beam forming concept uh, based on metaheuristic algorithm also. And it is shown that this collaborative beam forming is managed to uh, increase the antenna gain and performance um, uh, through these intelligent capabilities. And this research involves uh, simulation works uh, as well as uh, experiment using uh, USRP as the sensor nodes. Okay. Okay, moving on to uh, the next uh, type of network, which is a uh, wireless body area network. So wireless body area network can be, uh, wireless body, oh, sorry, wireless body area network, this is, uh, is uh, abbreviated as WBAN. So this network, can be described as a subfield of wireless sensor network that is devoted to healthcare monitoring. So it is about connecting these uh, miniaturized sensor nodes that are located in the clothes uh, or uh, on the body or under the skin. So uh, uh, and her team proposed an ultra wideband substrate integrated waveguide antennas for wireless body area environment. And this project is funded by UTM Fundamental Research Grant, uh, in, and it is a collaboration work with uh, University of Technical Malacca. Right. Um, another research in uh, sensor network involving um, our newest member of uh, CNET, Dr. Rachida Arsad, and her research is about investigation of flexible uh, zinc oxide piezoelectric flexible surface acoustic wave device for gas sensing application. And the main objective of this work is to improve the sensitivity of surface acoustic wave sensors. So the research involved the deposition of zinc oxide, uh, zinc oxide layer onto the um, flexible layer, and then uh, the layer as a base for flexible uh, uh, circuit, uh, surface acoustic wave or saw, saw device. And then this saw device is fabricated onto the deposited zinc oxide using inkjet printing and screen printing method to obtain the electrode. And then this uh, saw sensor is tested towards hydrogen gas in order to evaluate in terms of insertion loss, frequency shift, and dynamic response for gas sensor. Okay. Okay, moving on to the next slide. All right, we also have uh, applied research in the area of wireless sensor network. And uh, this is one of the applied research uh, led by associate professor Dr. Sharifah Kamila under the Sport Research Grant Scheme from Ministry of Higher Education. And this research presents a cyclist training monitoring system that is equipped with uh, this TELG mode. Okay, uh, as the basis and also customized sensor nodes that function as forwarded node, and also the relay nodes here to establish the wireless sensor network based on ZB standard. And the system is designed based on wireless sensor network that can be linked to the cloud network on the internet. And this TELG mode is attached on the bicycle. So in order to construct this uh, reliable system architecture, uh, we have uh, investigated and uh, performed the analysis in terms of the distance between the transmitter and the receiver. Okay, the transmitter here is, is uh, attached at the a bicycle here. The height and angle of the receiver here. Uh, the mobility of the transmitter means the um, how fast the cyclist is. The transmission power, uh, the packet size, and also the transmission rate. So we conducted the measurement at the velodrome RAS. So um, this velodrome is actually uh, around the length and the bank with a single and uh, these factors as among um, uh, factors that will affect during the transmission process. And based on the experiments, we found out that the proposed system is reliable even when the cycling, a cycli a cyclist is uh, moving at a very high speed. Um, of course, we uh, conducted the experiments using a um, normal society, not a professional one. And the packet loss for all the experiments conducted here is less than 2%, which does not give a huge impact to the data transmission. 
Okay. Um, basically, that is all about uh, sensor network. And it comes with another research area, which is uh, internet of IoT, which is a bit exciting. Uh, and it's a very much popular topic for research. Uh, basically, Internet of Things or IoT involves sensors and also actuators embedded in physical objects, which are linked through wire and also wireless network, uh, often using the same internet protocol um, that connects to the internet. Okay, so this technology is permission uh, for a wide area of applications ranging from home, uh, industry, and also healthcare. However, the environment of IoT is quite complex because it uh, encompasses many heterogeneous components. And these process a number of challenges, which include resource man management. And uh, of course, this leads to uh, many researchers providing solutions for a different type of applications. Okay, uh, on the screen right now is uh, one of the project in IoT uh, led by Associate Professor Dr. Sharifah Haviza. It is about wireless water cloud monitoring system for aquaculture. Uh, this project was funded by a uh, prototype research grant scheme under Mohair. And uh, Dr. Sharifah Haviza and her team have tested the system, the developed system, in Sungai Pulai for JB Biotech Sea Horses um, Hatchery. And the wireless water monitoring system was able to provide the data collection remotely with um, data analysis platform. Uh, interestingly, the Sungai Pulai has actually more than seven different types of horses. Okay. And now we move on to another collab collaborative research in IoT uh, which is a project awarded by MTSFP, Nation Technical Standards Forum, Berhad, MCMC. And Dr. Sharifah Haviza and I were members of this project, uh, led by Datin Dr. Nur Adila from UNT, and also other collaborators were re researchers from uh, Faculty of Engineering, UPM, uh, as well as local company, Louis Mewah Sendirian Berhad. So this project uh, actually aimed to develop a long-range communication system using low power wide area network between Bidong Island uh, in Terengganu here and also complex uh, Kulia in UMT campus Megabang Teleport. And the distance between uh, these two places is approximately 23 kilometer uh, line of sight UMT and also Bidong Island. Uh, interestingly, there is a UMT Marine Research Station uh, located in Bidong Island and there are uh, quite many research activities uh, conducted there, which include the area of marine life and also aquaculture. And therefore, the motivation of this project is to develop a cloud monitoring system for sense data in this island. And for your information, because this island is located in Terengganu, it is not uh, accessible from November until March because of the monsoon. So consequently, this project benefited UMT in terms of providing efficient data transmission solution uh, even during the monsoon season. All right. Um, the the pilot system use uh, utilize a LoRa nodes. LoRa is a type of transceiver which is which is um, called long range. Okay, LoRa. So LoRa nodes as transmitter and receiver, Yagi Uda directional antenna, uh, as antenna, and uh, Raspberry Pi as IoT gateway. And the transmitter node was on the hilltop of Bidong Island uh, with a communication tower around six meter tall. The node is located uh, on the rooftop of uh, Pusat Kuliah MT. And the system also uses uh, solar power to charge the solar battery uh, so that uh, it can act as power supply to the system. And finally, the system is connected to the cloud for data storage and monitoring purposes. And the developed system here has to follow the requirement by MCMC, uh, in which the uh, isotropic radiated power or EIRP should not be more and dbm and um, 
the project is now completed and it has been evaluated in terms of its uh, uh, received uh, signal strength indicator or RSSI and um, signal to noise ratio, SNR, and also power consumption. Right. Um, okay. And then we move on to another uh, exciting project by our young researcher, Dr. Muhammad Arif. And this is a project done for a TNCPI, Translational Grant. Uh, the purpose of this project is to monitor building power consumption using uh, LoRa, Long Range Transceiver, and also AC Current Sensors Module. And for the pilot project, the system is currently installed in block P19A on each floor in order to monitor the power consumption and uh, constantly to get the use pattern of it uh, as to, to the users on how much they consume power by displaying it on the dashboard. Okay, and this is another ongoing project. Uh, by Dr. Rashida Arsad, and this was an industrial collaboration with uh, CCM Chemicals and Rian Berhad. And this uh, project intends to develop a remote monitoring system on hazardous chlorine gas exposure for workers in chemical plant. Um, this company, CCM uh, Chemicals, produces uh, appro approximately around um, a uh, hundred thousand of metric ton for product every year. So uh, this product definitely induce chlorine gaseous in their environment. Therefore, industrial workers who are assigned to handle this chlorine-based product have higher risk of health problem uh, due to daily exposure to these chlorine vapors. And uh, this, this project is focusing in uh, developing wireless sensor network for monitoring this chlorine gas. And for this project, we also collaborate with uh, Bini Research Group and also TVET Research Group from uh, School of Education. Okay, another project in IoT uh, is led by Dr. Nick Nogini, uh, entitled Eco-Friendly Smart Renewable Microgrid System. And this project is funded by Transdisciplinary Disciplinary Research Grant, ETM, and it is a collaboration work with CEES uh, and the uh, Professor Dr. Muhammad Muzi. And the project is about Smart Grid, which is a backbone for power supply system. Uh, basically, we know that Smart Microgrid, uh, it uh, increases integration of usage of uh, renewable energy uh, where the purpose of the smart grid uh, is towards more greener energy and also a healthier environment. So for, uh, for the purpose of the project, uh, decision-making algorithm is developed so that it can effectively decide selected optimum power supply to the smart microgrid. Okay. Um, another sector um, that is considered one of the hottest applications area is the healthcare sector because uh, IoT has the possibility to enhance several of the medical applications. So for this work, we are proposing a non-invasive technique for voice pathologist detection and also classification uh, based on machine learning algorithm. And most researchers working in this area are focusing only on the uh, voice pathology detection and ignoring the classification diseases. So uh, on top of that, uh, the conventional method uh, currently used for detecting uh, voice pathology requires invasive techniques in which uh, it is based on the examination of uh, vocal cords here and also involves many types of equipment and hence it is uh, uh, time consuming and also cost effective. So the work here intends to develop a voice voice pathology detection system uh, classify the voice signal into healthy or pathological. And uh, besides using the existing available database, we will also be using uh, real uh, patient's data 
from a UKM Medical Center. So for this project, we collaborate with the UKM Medical Center and uh, one of the otolaryngologists, uh, Prof. Dr. Marina Ahmad Baki. Okay, and the last um, project here for IOT here is by Dr. Kamalu. It's the uh, high-speed mobility management performance in real LTE scenario for future optical challenges. Okay, uh, mobility management for high-speed uh, face challenges when the users move vertically across different network technologies. So for this. Uh, uh, mobility management are evaluated by uh, field measurements in the LTE network of a mobile operator in the Middle East. Okay, and uh, if you see here, UE with high speeds of 80 to 140 kilometers cause a high risk for successful, successful uh, seamless connectivity. Um, and, and in addition, the head over failure and call drop may occur here if the UE is moving with high speed high speed across these uh, two adjacent cells in the highways. So during the measurement, uh, handover failure is experienced uh, when UE speed is around, UE is uh, user equipment, UE speed is around 140 km uh, per hour. And also it has uh, been shown that handover preparation timing is, is increasing when uh, UE speed increases. Okay, and finally, uh, the last uh, research focus here is a software defined network. This is a, a new exciting type of network, uh, which is one of the modern networking technologies uh, introduced to simplify the network management by separating the data uh, and also control planes. Okay, uh, even though the widespread adoption of the internet, traditional IP networks are still complex and uh, very hard to manage. So uh, SDN breaks this vertical integration of traditional IP network, separating the network's control logic, okay, the control plane from the underlying router and switches that forward the traffic. Okay, uh, in short, what SDN can do is to simplify network management and also uh, uh, facilitates the evolution. It is also makes make it easier to uh, and introduce uh, new applications. Uh, and websites into networking. Okay, uh, for SDN, uh, we have several researchers going on, and um, here, uh, what I'm showing you right now is two projects uh, led by uh, Dr. Shari Fiza. On the left side, it's about mechanism to eliminate flow and trace conflict in SDN, and this project aims to uh, eliminate the flow entries for security models in SDN. So in short, this project here will provide solution for security in SDN by uh, classifying and detecting all flows to reduce the conflict between them. Okay, on the right hand side here is uh, about resource, man uh, resource management in virtual software defined network. Virtual software defined network um, it provides the flexible sharing of physical networking resources by multiple tenants, uh, where each tenant here can control their own operations virtual network. So, in terms of uh, efficient resource allocation uh, mechanism, in order to provide the quality. So, what this project here intends to is to solution to a manageable virtual uh, SDN. Okay. And another work in SDN uh, is uh, uh, from Dr. Kamaluddin. Uh, this work intends to compare the latency uh, and also detail evaluation of a software-defined network against the traditional network here to demonstrate that SDN is indeed a networking solution for the future. So based on the simulation, it has been shown that uh, SDN based has digital and latency per packet, and also it can increase the throughput compared to this traditional network. Okay. Um, right. So uh, now 
uh, I'm going to share you some of the common fee service, uh, community services that uh, uh, our groups have been involved. And uh, the first one, uh, Muhammad Arif is very active in community service. So he has helped um, to um, develop an outdoor power generation monitoring system for Pulau Tinggi, which is part of the CORES project under Prof. Dr. Omar Yaakob. And the system here was developed on a platform uh, floating on the sea 100 meter from the nearest shore in Pulau Tinggi, Johor. And the system here monitors the system here monitors the solar energy produced by the PV panels and uh, uh, the waste generator installed on the platform. And here is another project by Dr. Arif, uh, which involves um, solar generation monitoring for College Tun Hussein on in UTM using solar, Wi-Fi, uh, wi and also uh, current sense module. And this system was developed for KPHO to monitor the energy produced by the PV panels to light up the LED lighting for the street connecting this uh, KTHO to the nearest food court. Okay, more exciting projects here uh, in community services. Uh, one of our researchers, Dr. Nuzai Ifiana, is very active in community service, services and she involved in various IoT projects. So this project is about real-time monitoring support mitigation uh, in which she collaborated with Sekolah Menengah Kemasaan Skudai and the school here has a fertigation system, but they have them to the crop during school holiday. So the uh, Fiona and her team uh, had came up with the solution, uh, uh, which is the monitoring system uh, where teachers can get the notification regarding the condition of the crop, such as uh, feeding, humidity, temperature, and the teacher can take action when it's needed. System will also supply the fertilizer to the plants when it is required. Okay, here uh, are another two projects uh, collaborated with Sekolah Kebangsaan Pekananas. The first one here on my right hand side is a project by Dr. Ifiana, which is about posture corrector system called POSCO. And for this project, Dr. Ifiana and her team has collaborated. Uh, with the students in Sekolah Kebangsaan Pekanenas and they had interviewed some of the students to get the real picture of the problem and they came up with the solution uh, of the heavy bag problem uh, which is the posture character system where sensors will vi vibrate when the user is not in a good position the person will aware and correct his or her posture and they can be viewed in apps as well and a low cost library system, uh, which also uh, was installed in Sekolah Kebangsaan Pekanan Nas and uh, in the middle of uh, improving the system. And Dr. Uh, Dr. Rashida has won uh, several awards in uh, for this system, uh, which are silver medal in Nali and also a bronze medal in uh, K University UKM. Okay, now I'm going to share with you some of uh, international collaborations that we have. Okay, um, Associate Professor Dr. Sharifa Kamila was awarded with Erasmus International Grant for Capacity Building in Higher Education. And the title of the project is about Building Skills 4.0 through University and Enterprise Coll Collaboration. Uh, basically, for this project, there are 10 organizations coming from uh, six different countries. And the main motivation is to bring together, together the targeted countries with their specific skills in ICT in order to provide the uh, basic and novel skill development strategy in both EU and also Asia. Uh, there are four research domains for uh, this project. The first one is uh, industrial engineering and management. The second one is software engineering and big data analytics. Uh, the third one is wireless um, and network analytics. And the fourth one is uh, artificial intelligence. And for Malaysia, U UPM is responsible for domain wireless and network analytics, while it's responsible for domain artificial intelligence. And for this purpose, uh, Cairo is our associate partner for designing and uh, implementing uh, teaching programs in artificial intelligence. And ultimately, the main aim of this project is to 
uh, develop a skills 4.0 based training and learning center of excellence in each partner country. And our very first workshop for this domain will be expected to be held in uh, December this year. And the other members of this research project are myself, uh, Dr. Julia, Associate Professor Dr. Nadeha, Associate Professor Dr. Hazlina, Dr. Raida from uh, Computing, and also Dr. Usman Ullah. Okay. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Um, this is a smart watering system, uh, which is a collaboration project with institutes, uh, UTM, UTB for Brunei, and ICT Japan, UTSY Myanmar, uh, NetTech Thailand, and this is um, a work under Asian EVO grant. And UTM team here is represented by uh, Dr. Shaifa Pizza and also Dr. Nuzal Efiyana. And they are responsible in implementing uh, the optimization algorithm for the inlet and outlet gate of the paddy bay. Okay, so if you can see here, uh, the smart watering system for uh, paddy field in Wasan Brunei and deployment of sensor nodes, uh, which are using LoRa modules from NICT and also cloud data collection. Okay, and then I'm going to to share my experience here, uh, in which in 2015 and 2017, um, Dr. Nick Dodini and I were invited to go to uh, University of Dihad al Sash in Los France as invited researcher. So we were awarded this travel grant was around a euro ten thousand to stay there for one month, and more of projects are um, developing meta heuristic algorithms for the application of wireless sensor network. And this is a collaboration work with Prof. Uh, Lassan Idomgar from University of Health as such. And was based on this collaboration, UTM have signed a memorandum of understanding with University of Health as such in France to strengthen and also acknowledge our collaboration with uh, the researchers in France. And among our areas of, co of cooperation will be joint R&D research in terms of uh, collaborative research and also publications and also staff exchange to both universities. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Uh, this is a, a project by Dr. Efiyana in which she collaborated with University Sri Vijaya uh, and Sri Palembang, uh, develop a real-time monitoring system for aquaponic. So Dr. Efiyana awarded a program from this university and she was 19 with a group of students this aquaponic pond is still ongoing because of this pandemic but there's still a little bit delay in delivery okay in 2019 uh, Dr. Nuzah Ifiana was granted Sakura Science Plan um, uh, which is a celebration work with National Institute of Technology Kagoshima College Japan so uh, Dr. Ifiana went there uh, with the students to participate in this uh, active learning project. And the purpose here is to introduce active learning implementation based on the IoT models which she and her team have developed together to the students in this uh, NIT College Japan. And also, Dr. Rashida has also secured the World Award for Science Plan, World Institute of Tokyo, Japan. And the title of her project is about virtual capstone experience. Uh, congratulations, Dr. Rashida. And finally, to highlight, this is the seminar that we held this year. It's about the imaging networking technology, so predefined network. So for this seminar, we collaborated with Lightwave Communication Research Group, a Pervasive Computing Research Group from Science Computer, and also RTPE uh, Communication Society and Vehicular Technology Society. So basically, um, uh, to end my presentation, I would like to quote this interesting fact which was found in the um, Tacoma News Tribune in April 11, 1953. Uh, credit to Mr. Cryer from uh, ATP Ecom Society. And the president and the director of the Pacific Telephone and Telegraph Company, Mark Sullivan, has predicted that in its final development, the telephone will be carried out by the individual. Uh, perhaps as we carry a watch today, so it probably will, pro will require you know, dial or equivalent. And I think the users will be able to see each other if they want as they talk. 
So this 1953 prediction has proved to be largely accurate because modern phones uh, certainly carry out the individual. And what I'm going, uh, what I'm trying to show to you here is how is the technical engineering area up and down. And in addition, the COVID-19 pandemic here has also presented the uh, ultimate stress for wireless network and Alhamdulillah, our country's wireless network can most of Malaysians connected when they needed it the most, thank you to the uh, telecommunication engineer. And without doubt, the communication network technology is in the driving force behind United Nations Sustainable Development Goals to achieve a better and more sustainable future for everyone. So with that, I would also like to take this opportunity to promote our school's new master program, uh, Master of Engineering in Wireless Communication and Network, and for local applicants until 31st August 2020. And with that, uh, this is the end. We welcome any collaboration. And if you want to further about it, you can always email me at nurumuazai.etm.my. For current research projects, and you want, or if you want to remember, go to our website here, or you can uh, scan the QR code here. With that, thank you very much for listening to my talk today. And now I pass over back to you, Prof. Kamal. Again, I would like to thank to I would like to take this opportunity to thank you very much to Astro Professor Dr. Nurul Uza. Nurul Muazza Abdul Latif for sharing a very informative session. Now I would like to open for any question and answer session to all viewers. You can post your question to the Facebook Live here. Maybe before we got we get a question from the viewers, let me ask you one question, Dr. Nurul. What what is the main difference between wireless sensing networks and IoT? All right. Well, it's a very interesting question. Um, although uh, IoT and wireless sensing network are closely related, however, there are uh, some uh, remarkable differences between them. Uh, wireless, wireless sensing network is basically, basically a communication technology which involves network sensors uh, sensing together and monitoring uh, the physical conditions of the environment. And however, it is also the foundation of IoT applications because IoT, on the, on the other hand, it involves uh, smart, smart devices which are uh, connected to the internet and monitored and also controlled over internet. Uh, so in short here, wireless internet network can be part of IoT. And in simple words, IoT is a concept of things connected to the internet uh, in which in IoT, sensors uh, send directly the data to the internet, uh, which can further, further be processed over cloud and also to generate meaningful uh, analytic results as opposed to wireless sensor network, which is more towards uh, data gathering of the sense um, uh, environment. So I hope I okay. answered the question. Thank you. Okay, uh, maybe uh, what what are, what are the challenges faced by IoT, do you think, Dr. Nuru Maza? Okay, um, even though IoT, is uh, being proposed as solutions to a wide range of applications, but some of the limitations that uh, need to be taken care of in terms of hardware level or software level. Uh, there are different characteristics of um, a node, also in terms of uh, limited memory and also processing, and uh, topology changes, uh, as well as other constraints such as uh, latency or delay. Um, there are also challenges in making IoT as an system. Somehow, the heterogeneity of uh, this IoT sensor node uh, uh, creates because there is no uh, at all the standardization at the manufacturer level. So basically, because of this heterogeneity, it poses uh, a quite uh, big challenges to the IoT system. Okay, Pokemon, okay in, 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 yeah, in terms of uh, application for the I, IoT, you know, what was the next big things for the application of this IoT? What do you think about this? What the next big thing uh, in the IoT? Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, right. Um, so, um, I think IoT system, um, 
because of the because it is one of the very popular researchers, it can be um, um, and many people go into it. But somehow, uh, this uh, creating this people also have to take uh, into account these challenges, just just this uh, limited memory, uh, the data transmission, the latency, and so on. And of course, with the production of this software defined network, can also be integrated with the IoT. Uh, which uh, will be very exciting for the future. Okay, come on. Okay, all right. I think uh, that's all for today. Once again, I would like to... Uh, okay, there is another one very interesting question before we, we finish our session today. Uh, this is from Fatia Jamaluddin. This is very interesting. Perhaps we can do collaboration between UTMC Nets and Center for Subsurface Imaging UTP for setting up communication network in performing geological mapping in rural areas. Many fields can be explored. What do you think about this, uh, Dr. Nurul Muazza? Um, okay, thank you, uh, Mrs. Fatia Jaludin. Uh, of course, we can do great with that. And also, um, this sensor network or IT system can also be deployed in these uh, rural areas, uh, in which I did some of the researchers uh, in, UT in UTP, they still have to go there in order to collect uh, data from the sensor nodes. So perhaps this can be improved with the introduction of this IoT technology and also sensor network so that they don't have to go to these uh, rural areas many times to collect all this data. Okay, Pokama? Okay, all right. Anyway, we don't have any more questions. So once again, thank you to Dr. Nuru Muhaza. Uh, that is the end of our Q and A session. Now I will let pass over to back to Poncheri for the closing remarks and highlight our next webinar on C Research and Innovation School of Electrical Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, University of Technology Malaysia. Over to you, Poncheri Yuzaima. Thank you, Prof Kamal, and thank you also to our guest speaker, Associate Professor Dr Nurul Muazza. Abdul Latif for the interesting topic just now. Thank you, Doctor. All right, viewers, we are at the end of our session today. Thank you all for taking out time to watch this live telecast. And for those who missed this live session, can watch this video again in our Facebook. Don't forget to like, comment, and share our Facebook and videos to your friends and colleagues. And please don't forget to join us next week, 25th of August, 2.30 p.m. for the next series of webinar with our guest speaker, Dr. Roseha A. Rashid, Head of Advanced Telecommunication Software and System Research Group on the title, Making Sense of Internet of Things Environment. All right, viewers, as usual, I will end this session with a quote. Science knows no country because knowledge belongs to humanity and it's the torch which illuminates the world. Okay, dolls, keep on dreaming. See you all next week. Stay safe, keep your distance, and stay tuned. Wabilahi Taufiq walidaya. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you.